Chapter 3 diyoruz. Then Wudan Word demiş. Code was living idly through a book. Böyle sayfalarını çeviriyor. Tembel bir şekilde. Trying to ignore the silence of the empty inn when the door opened. And the Graham backed into the room. Bir şekilde aşırı sıkılıyor. Başka hep sıkılıyor da sıkılıyor. Sıkılıyor da sıkılıyor. Bahsede dedi ki çok sıkılacaksın burada durma gitmek istiyorsan git falan. Sıkıntı. Bu kadar çok vurgu yapıldığını sıkıntı olayına fark etmediydim. Silence'a vurgu yapıldığını fark ettim ama bir ton daha ciddiyetini fark ettim diyeyim. Ve sıkıntı bir şekilde aşırı sıkılıyor. Bu kod karakteri diyoruz. Okay. Just got done with it. Graham maneuvered through the maze of tables with exaggerated care. I was gonna bring it in the last night, but then I thought one last coat of oil, rub it and let dry. Can't say I'm sorry I did. Lord and lady, as beautiful as anything these hands have ever made. A small line formed between the innkeeper's eyebrows. Then, seeing the flat bundle in the man's arms, he brightened. Ah, the mounting bar. Caught smile, tired, tiredly. I'm sorry, Graham. It's been so long. I'd almost forgotten the wish. Buraya bir bakıp geliyorum. Devam diyoruz. Graham gave him a bit of a strange look. For month, ain't long for wood all the way from Aryan, not with the rose being as bad as they are. Four months caught a cold. He saw Graham watching him and hurried to add. That can be a lifetime if you're waiting for something. He tried to smile reassuringly, but it came out sickly falan. Hep böyle içinde bulunması gerektiği rolün dışına fışkırıp duruyor yanlışlıkla falan. Bunları görüyoruz, okey diyoruz. In fact, Cody himself seemed rather sickly. Not exactly unhealthy, but hollow. When demiş. Şu kelimeye bakalım bilmiyorum. W-A-N diyoruz. Bitik, solgun, bitik, soluk, benzi atmış, yorgun. Evet diyoruz. Like a plant that's been moved into the wrong sort of soil and lacking something vital has begun to wilt. Güzel benzetme çünkü tıpatıp aynısı oluyor diyoruz. Abla çok fazla drama yok mu sende de falan var ama kitap güzel. Bana takılın, bana takılın, devam edin kitap güzel diyoruz. Şuralara bir bakıp geliyorum. Devam diyoruz. Graham noted the difference. The innkeeper's gestures weren't as extra vagrant. His voice wasn't as deep. Even his eyes weren't as bright as they had been a month ago. Their color seemed duller. They were less sea foam, less green grass than they had been. Now they were like river weed, like the bottom of a green glass bottle. And his hair had been bright before, the color of flame. Now it seemed... Red, just red hair color, really, demiş, bakıp geliyorum. The innkeeper's gestures weren't as extra vagant demiş, kelimeye bir bakmak istiyorum. Extra vagant, böyle sanırım abartı, savgın aşırı müslif, ölçüsüz, fahiş demiş. Okey diyoruz, bakmaya devam. Devam diyoruz. Cot drew back the cloth and looked underneath. The wood was a dark charcoal color with a black grain, heavy as a sheet of iron. Three dark pegs were set above a word chiseled into the wood. Fully, Graham read, odd name for a third. God nodded, his face carefully blank. How much do I owe you? He asked quietly. Graham thought for a moment. After what you've given me to cover the cost of the wood, There was a cunning glimmer in the man's eye, around one and three. Code handed over to talents. Keep the rest. It's difficult wood to work with. That it is, Graham said with some satisfaction. Like stone under the saw, try a chisel like iron. Then, after all the shooting was done, I couldn't chart it. I noticed that, Code said with a flicker of curiosity. Running a finger along the darker groove that letters made in the wood. How did you manage it? Well, Graham said smugly, after wasting half a day, I took it over to the smithy. Me and the boy managed to sear it with a hot iron. 
took us better than two hours to get it. Black, not a wisp of smoke, but it made us think like all the leather and clover. Damn it, this thing. What sort of wood on burn? <laughs> Graham waited a minute, but the innkeeper gave no signs of having heard. Where would he, where would he like me to hang it then? Cot roused himself enough to look around the room. You can leave that to me, I think. I haven't quite decided where to put it. Okay, diyor. Şuraya bir bakıp geliyorum. Şuraya bakmak istiyorum. Like stone under the saw. Tamam. Bir taşı nasıl böyle bir testereyle doğru yemiyorsak öyle bir şey gibi. Try it. Chisel like iron demiş. Şu chisel kelimesine bakmak istiyorum. Chisel. Keski, iskar, pele, oymacı kalemi, kalem keski, oymak, yoltmak, sızdırmak, kazıklamak, dolandırmak, okey diyoruz. Oymacılık gibi bir şey try it. Chisel. Like iron demiş böyle iron gibi olduğu için onu çaysılayamıyoruz falan. Then after all the shooting was done. I couldn't chart it demiş. Şu çara bakalım bir de. Gündelik ev işi, ev işi demiş. Kömür haline getirmek, karbonlaşmak, kömürleşmek, karbonlaşmak, temizlikçilik yapmak, gündelikçilik yapmak, kömürleşme gibi bir şey sanki. Bakıp geliyorum. Devam diyoruz. Graham left a handful of iron nails and beat the innkeeper good day. Cot remained at the bar. I like running his hands over the wood and the bird. Before too long, Buzz came out of the kitchen and looked over his teacher's shoulder. There was a long moment of silence, like a tribute given to the dead. Eventually, Buzz spoke up. May I ask a question, Rishi? Cot smiled gently, always bust. A troublesome question, those tend to be the only worthwhile kind. They remained staring at the object on the bar for another silent moment, as if trying to commit it to memory, fully. Şuna bir bakalım, hata gibi bir şey, aptallık, yanlış bir şey yapma falan. Aptallıktan da o, çılgın aptallık, delilik, aptalca davranış, dekor için yapılmış, yapı demiş, okey diyoruz. Şöyle bakıp geliyorum. Devam diyoruz. Buzz struggled for a moment, opening his mouth, then closing it with a frustrated look, then repeating the process. Out with it, Cot said, finally. What were you thinking, Buzz said, with an odd mixture of confusion and concern? Cot was a long while in answering. I tend to think too much, Buzz. My greatest successes came from decisions I made when I stopped thinking and simply did what felt right. Even if there was no good explanation for what I did, he smiled wistfully, even if there were very good reasons for me not to do what I did. Şunlar yine genel özet gibi bir şey bakıp geliyorum. Devam diyoruz. Bust ran a hand along the side of his face. So you're trying to avoid second guessing yourself? Cot hesitated. You could say that, he admitted. I could say that, Rishi, but said smugly. You, on the other hand, would complicate things needlessly. Cot shrugged and turned his eyes back to the mountain board. Nothing to do but find a place for it, I suppose. Let me look up. Okey, bu bayağı önemli bir nokta. Ben bunun bu kadar başlarda bahsedildiğini bilmiyordum. Spoiler'a giriyor, spoiler vermeme kararı aldım. Yeri geldiğinde konuşacağız. Okey diyoruz, düşünmeye devam. Şuradan devam ediyorum. Cot shrugged and turned his eyes back to the mountain board. Nothing to do but find a place for it, I suppose. Out here, Bust's expression was horrified. Cot grinned wickedly. A measure of vitality coming back into his face. Of course, he said, seeming to savor Bust's reaction. He looked speculatively at the walls and pursed his lips. Where did you put it anyway? In my room, Bust admitted, under my bed. Cot nodded distractedly, still looking at the walls. Go get it, then. He made a small shooing gesture with one hand, and Bust hurried off, looking unhappy. Bakıp geliyorum. Yine bir ince görüyor. Spoiler olduğu için bahsetmediğim çok kötü olaydan çıkabilmeye dair. 
bahsetmedim ne olduğundan çok kötü bir şey geliyor. Ama zaten belli karakterin başına çok kötü bir şey geldi. Adını değiştirecek kadar başına kötü bir şey gelmiş diyoruz. Neyse. Mutlu olduğu zaman vitality coming back into his face falan bir şekilde mutluluk bir şekilde hayattan tad alma, zevk alma, başına gelen kötülüğün çözümleri bir şekilde diyoruz. Böyle çıkış noktaları varmış diyeyim. Ben bu kadar da fark etmediydim. Basit detaylar ama işlevseller diyoruz. Okey, bakmaya devam ediyorum. Devam diyoruz. The bar was decorated with glittering bottles and coat was standing on the now vacant counter between the two heavy oak barrels when Bas came back into the room, black scabbard swinging loosely from one hand. Caught pause in the act of setting the mounting board atop one of the barrels and cried out in dismay. Careful, boss, you're carrying a lady there, not swinging some bench at a barn dance. Falan. Ne böyle trip lafları diyor falan ama takılın siz bana güzel kitap. Bas stopped in his tracks and Dutifully gathered it up in both hands before walking the rest of the way to the bar. Bakıp geliyorum. Caught pounded the pair of nails into the wall, twisted some wire, and hung the mounting board firmly on the wall. Hand it up, will you? He asked with an odd catch in his voice. Using both hands, Buzz held it up to him. Looking for a moment like a squire offering up a sword to some bright armored knight. But there was no knight there, just an innkeeper, just a man in an apron who called himself caught. He took the sword from Buzz and stood upright on the counter behind the bar. He drew the sword without a flourish. It shone a dull gray white in the room's autumn light. It had the appearance of a new sword. It was not notched or rusted. There were no bright scratches scattering along its dull gray side. But though it was unmirrored, unmirrored, it was old. And while it was obviously a sword, it was not a familiar shape. At least no one in this town would have found it familiar. It looked as if an alchemist had distilled a dozen swords, and when the crucible had Cool this was lying in the bottom, a sword in its pure form. It was slender and graceful. It was deadly as a sharp stone beneath swift water. Okay. Cod held it a moment. His hand did not shake. Yine ince karakterin bazı özellikleri hala karakterde durmuyor. Devam ediyor karakteri tamamen kaybetmedik falan. O kötü olaydan sonra o kötü olay ne? Spoiler yok. Spoiler yok. Oraya gelince şey edeceğiz. Then he set the sword on a mounting board. His grey white medal shone against a dark robe behind it. But the handle could be seen. It was dark enough to be almost indistinguishable from the wood. The word we needed, black against blackness, seemed to reproach fully. Cod climbed down, and for a moment he and Buzz stood side by side, silently looking up. Buzz broke the silence. It is rather striking, he said, as if he regretted the truth, but he trailed off, trying to find appropriate words. He shuddered. Cod clapped him on the back, oddly cheerful. Don't bother being disturbed on my account. He seemed more lively now. As if his activity lent him energy, I like it, he said with sudden conviction, and hung the black scabbard from one of the mounting bark's pegs. Then there were things to be done, bottles to be polished and put back in place, lunch to be made, lunch clutter to be cleaned. Things were cheerful for a while in a pleasant, busting way. The two talked of small matters as they worked, And while they moved around a great deal, it was obvious they were reluctant to finish whatever task they were close to completing, as if they both dreaded the moment when the work would end and the silence would fill the room again. Bir şekilde tu diyor, bas da gayet farkında bu sessizlik, bu lanet olasıca sıkıcılığın falan. 
bir şekilde basta zorlanıyor. Sadece kvot değil. Bastığın kvotla beraber kot, kot diyecektim. Ağzımdan kaçtı kvot. Kotla beraber durmaya karar vermesi ciddi bir cesaret, azim gerektiren bok bir süreçte bir hareket diyoruz. Then something odd happened. The door opened and noise poured into the waste town like a gentle wave. People bustled, bustled in, talking and dropping bundles of belongings. They chose tables and threw their coats over the backs of chairs. One man, wearing a shirt of heavy metal rings, unbuckled a sword and leaned it against a wall. Two or three were nice on their belts. Four or five called for drinks. Cod and Buzz watched for a moment, then moved smoothly into action. Cod smiled and began pouring drinks. Buzz darted outside to see if there were horses that needed stepling. In ten minutes, the inn was a different place. Coins rang on the bar, cheese and fruit were set on platters, and a large copper pot was hung to simmer in the kitchen. Men moved tables and chairs about to better suit their group of nearly a dozen people. Could identify them as they came in. Two men and two women, wagoneers, rough from years of being outside and smiling to be spending a night out of the wind. Three guards with hard eyes, smelling of iron. A tinker with a pot belly and a ready smile showing his few remaining teeth. Two young men, one sandy-haired, one dark, well-dressed and well-spoken. Travelers sensible enough to hook up with a larger group for protection on the road. The settling in period lasted an hour or two. Prices of rooms were dickered over. Dickert. Enteresan bir kullanım. Friend arguments started about who slept with whom. Minor necessities were brought in from wagons or saddlebags. Beds were requested and water heated. He was taken to the horses and caught top of the oil in all the lamps. The tinker hurried outside to make use of the remaining daylight. He walked his two-wheel mule cart through the town's streets. Children crowded around, begging for candy and stories and shims. When it became apparent that nothing was going to be handed out, most of them lost interest. They formed a circle with a boy in the middle and started to clap, keeping the beat with a children's song that had been ages old when their grandparents had chanted it. When the heart fire turns the blue, Chandri Indios, what to do, what to do, run outside, run and hide. Laughing, the boy in the middle tried to break out of the circle while the other children pushed them back. Tinker, the old man's voice rang out like a bell. Potmander, knife rinder, grinder, willow wound, water finder, cut cork, mother leaf, Six cars of the city streets, writing paper, sweet meats. This drew the attention of the children. They flocked back to him, making a small parade as he walked down the street, singing, belt leather, black pepper, pine lace and bright feather, tinker in town tonight, gone tomorrow, working through the evening light, come wife, come daughter, a small cloth and rose water. After a couple of minutes, he settled outside the waste town, set up his sharpening wheel and began to grin a knife. As the adults began to gather around the old man, the children returned to their game. A girl in the center of the circle put one hand over her eyes and tried to catch the other children as they ran away, clapping and chanting. When his eyes are black as crow, where to go, where to go, near and far, here they are. Yine çendriyin diyoruz. Okay. The tinker dealt with everyone in turn, sometimes two or three at a time. He traded sharp knives for dull ones and a small coin. 
He sold shears and needles, copper pots and small bottles that wise had wise hit quickly after buying them. He traded buttons and bags of cinnamon and salt, limes from Tainu, chocolate from Tarbian, polished horn from Airuva, Airuva, Dijem. All the while, the children continued to sing. See a man without a face, move like ghosts from place to place. What's their plan? What's their plan? Chandrian, Chandrian. Okay, dears. Caught guessed the travelers had been together a month or so, long enough to become comfortable with each other, but not long enough to be squabbling over small things. They smelled of road dust and horses. He breathed it in like perfume. He breathed it in like perfume falan. Bir şekilde aşırı hoşuna gittiğini görüyoruz. Bu gezginci tayfasının kokuları olsun. Ya kokusunu şu an sevdiğini söylüyor ama kokusunu seven başka şeylerini de seviyordur diyor. İnsan ne diye gezginci olduğunu anladığı bir insanın yaydığı gezginci kokusunu sadece seviyor olsun. No diyoruz. Gezginciliğin kendisini seviyor diyoruz. Best of all was the noise. Leather creaking and laughing. The fire cracked and spat. The woman flirted. Someone even knocked over a chair for the first time in a long while. There was no silence in the waste on end. Or if there was, it was too faint to be noticed or too well hidden. Cot was in the middle of it all, always moving, like a man tending a large, complex machine. Ready with a drink just as a person called for it, he talked and listened in the right amounts. He laughed at jokes, shook hands, smiled, and whisked, whisked coins off the bar as if he truly needed the money. Then, when the time for songs came and everyone had sung their favorites and still wanted more, could let them from behind the bar, clapping to keep a beat. With the fire shining in his hair, he sang, Tinker tenor, more verses than anyone had heard before, and no one minded in the least. Hours later, the common room had a warm, jovial, yet a jovial feel to it. Cot was kneeling on the hearth, building up the fire when someone spoke behind him. Cot, başka birisinden bahsediyor falan tam. Boş yapmıyorum, şuralara bakıp geliyorum. Quoth, the innkeeper turned, wearing a slightly confused smile. Sir, it was one of the well-dressed travelers. He swayed a little. Your quoth. Quoth, sir, quoth replied in an indulgent tone that mothers use on children and innkeepers use on drunks. Hani bir şekilde böyle karşıdaki insanı çok aşırı saçma konuşuyormuş gibi hissettirip bastırmaya çalışıyor. Ben quoth değilim konusunda. Diyorum. Quote the bloodless, the man pressed ahead with the dodged persistence of the inebriated. Ne kadar enteresan bir kelime. Şuna bakalım. Ne kadar enteresan bir kelimesin sen böyle. Kelimeler de benim çocuklarım. Sarhoş demiş. Inebriated. Inebriated. Okay. Kelime cidden güzelmiş. Hiç bu kadar saçma bir anlamı olduğunu düşünmediydim. Yıldızı bastık, devam ediyoruz. You looked familiar, but I couldn't finger it. He smiled proudly and tapped a finger to his nose. Aklıma ne geldi? Sadece dizinin adını söyleyeceğim. Spoiler olmuyor. Better call Saul. Okay. Then I heard you sing, and I knew it was you. I heard you in Emer once. Cried my eyes out afterward. I never heard anything like that before or since. Broke my heart. The young man's sentences grieved jumbled as he continued, but his face remained earnest. I knew it couldn't be you, but I thought it was. Even though, but who else has your hair? He shook his head, trying unsuccessfully to clear it. I saw the place in Emir where you killed him. By the fountain, the cobblestones are all shattered. He frowned and concentrated on the word, shattered. They say no one can mend them. 
The Sandy haired man paused again, squinting for focus. He seemed surprised by the innkeeper's reaction. The red haired man was grinning. Are you saying I look like cloth? Dark cloth? I've always thought so myself. I have an engraving of him in back. My assistant teases me for it. Will you tell him what you just told me? Caught through a final log onto the fire and stood. But as he stepped from the heart, one of his legs twisted underneath him and he fell heavily to the floor, knocking over a chair. Several of the travelers hurried over. But the innkeeper was already on his feet, waving people back to their seats. No, no, I'm fine. Sorry to startle anyone. In spite of his grin, it was obvious he'd hurt himself. His face was tight with pain, and he leaned heavily on a chair for support. Şu kelimeye bakmak istiyorum çünkü I have an engraving of him in back derken espri yapıyorsa bile gerçeği anlatıyor olabilir falan. Çok yapıyorlar bunu çünkü karakterler gravür oyma oymacılık işleme, gravür sanat oyma resim, oyma işi, hakkaklık falan. Ya böyle bir resim var cidden ya da bir şekilde sandığın içindeki şeyle falan bir alakası var mı falan. Elimdeki ayrıntıları işlemeye çalışıyorum. Okay, bakmaya devam. Took an arrow in the knee on my way through the elf tree summers ago. It gives out every now and then. He grimaced and said wistfully, this what made me give up the good life on the road. He reached down to touch his oddly bent leg tenderly. One of the mercenaries spoke up. I'd put a towel ties on that, or it'll swell terrible. Caught touched it again and nodded. I think you're wise, sir. He turned to the sandy-haired man who stood swaying slightly by the fireplace. Could you do me a favor, son? The man nodded dumbly. Just close the flue. Caught gesture toward the fireplace. Bust, will you help me upstairs? Bust hurried over and drew Cot's arm around his shoulders. Cot leaned on him with every other step as they made their way through the doorway and up the stairs. Arrow in the leg, Bust asked under his breath, are you really that embarrassed from taking a little fall? Thank God you're as jullible as they are. Jullible, dear. Bakıyoruz. Jullible. Come on. Saf salak ben. Kolay aldın hem demiş. Niye öyle diyorsun? Cod said sharply as soon as they were out of sight. He began to curse under his breath as he climbed a few more steps. His knee obviously uninjured. Boss's eyes widened then narrowed. Cod stopped at the top of the steps and rubbed his eyes. One of them knows who I am. Caught from suspects. Which one? Best asked with a mix of apprehension and anger. Green shirt. Sandy hair. The one nearest to me by the fireplace. Give him something to make him sleep. He's already been drinking. No one will think twice if he happens to pass out. Best thought briefly. Naimin Menka. Bas raised an eyebrow but nodded. Caught straightened. Listen three times, Bast. Bast blinked once and nodded. Caught spoke crisply and cleanly. I was a city licensed escort from Relian, wounded while successfully defending a caravan, a row in right knee. Three years ago, summer, a grateful seal dish merchant gave me money to start an inn. His name is Diolan. We were traveling from Purvis. Mention it casually. Do you have it? I hear you three times, Rishi, was replied formally. Go. Half an hour later, Bas brought a ball to his master's room, reassuring him that everything was well downstairs. Cot nodded and gave Ter's instructions that he not be disturbed for the rest of the night. Closing the door behind himself, Bas's expression was worried. He stood at the top of the stairs for some time, trying to think of something he could do. It is hard to say what troubled Bas so much. Cot didn't seem noticeably changed in any way, except perhaps that he moved a little slower 
and whatever small spark of nice activity had lit behind his eyes was dimmer now. In fact, it could hardly be seen. In fact, it may not have been there at all. Because sat in front of the fire and ate his meal mechanically, as if he were simply finding a place inside himself to keep the food. After the last bite, he sat staring into nothing, not remembering what he had eaten or what it tasted like. The fire snapped, making him blink and look around the room. He looked down at his hands, one curled inside the other, resting in his lap. After a moment, he lifted and spread them, as if warming them by the fire. They were graceful, with long, delicate fingers. He watched them intently, as if expecting them to do something on their own. Then he lowered them to his lap, one hand lightly cupping the other, and returned to watching the fire. Expressionless, motionless, he said until there was nothing left but grey ash and duly glowing coals. As he was undressing for bed, the fire flared. The red light traced faint lines across his body, across his back and arms. All the scars were smooth and silver, streaking him like lightning, like lines of gentle remembering. The flare of flame revealed them all briefly. Old ones and new, all the scars were smooth and silver except one. The fire flickered and died. Sleep met him like a lover in an empty bed. All the scars were smooth and silver except one diyor. Not sure. Bir şekilde bir yara alıyor da ya da şeyden bahsediyor. Bütün bu sessizlik, bıkma, muhabbeti, bu hayat enerjisinin yok olması falan. Except one derken ona mı gönderme yapıyor? Possible bence diyor. Ama bir fiziksel yara da olabilir. Çok yakın zamanda aldı. Bizzat şeye gelmeden önce aldı. Inkeeper'a possible diyoruz. Devam. The travelers left early the next morning, but tended to their knees, explaining his master's knee was swollen quite badly. And he didn't feel up to taking the stairs early in the day. Everyone understood except for the sandy-haired merchant's son, who was too grudgy to understand much of anything. The guards exchanged smiles and rolled their eyes while the tinker gave an impromptu sermon on the subject of temperance, but recommended several unpleasant hangover cures. After they left, Buzz tended to the inn, which was no great chore, as there were no customers. Most of his time was spent trying to find ways to amuse himself. Sometime after noon, Cod came down the stairs to find him crushing walnuts on the bar with a heavy leather-bound book. Good morning, Rishi. Good morning, Buzz, Cod said. Any news? The reason boy stopped by, wanted to know if we needed any mutton. Cod nodded, almost as if he had been suspecting the news. How much did you order? Buzz made a face. I hate mutton, Rishi. It tastes like wet mittens. Cod shrugged and made his way to the door. I've got some errands to run. Keep an eye on things, will you? I always do. Outside the waystone inn, the air lay still and heavy on the empty dirt road that ran through the center of town. The sky was a featureless gray sheet of cloud that looked as if it wanted to rain, but couldn't quite work up the energy. Cot walked across the street to the open front of the smithy. The smith wore his hair cropped short and his beard thick and bushy. As Cot watched, he carefully drew a pair of nails through a sky blaze color, fixing it firmly onto a curved wooden handle. Hello, Caleb. The smith leaned the sky up against the wall. What can I do for you, Master Cod? The Dorism boys stop by your place too. Kaleb nodded. They still lo losing sheep? Cod asked. Actually, some of the lost ones finally turned up. Torn up awful, practically shredded. 
walls cut asked. The cement shrugged. It's the wrong time of year, but what else will it be? A beer? I guess they're just selling off what they can't watch over properly, them being short-handed and all. Short-handed? Had to let their hired man go because of Texas, and their oldest son took the king's coin early this summer. He's off fighting the rebels in Manat now. Manera's caught corrected gently. If you see their boy again, let him know I'd be willing to buy about three halves. I'll do that, the smith gave the innkeeper a knowing look. Is there anything else? Well, Cotton looked away, suddenly self-conscious. I was wondering if you have any rod iron lying around, he said, not meeting the smith's eye. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, mind you. Just plain old pig iron will do nicely. Caleb chuckled. I didn't know if you were going to stop by at all. Stop by at all. Old Cobb and the rest came by day before yesterday. He walked over to a workbench and lifted up a piece of canvas. I made a couple extras just in case. Cod picked up a rod of iron about two feet long and swung it casually with one hand. Clever man. I know my business, the smith said smugly. You need anything else? Actually, Cod said as he settled the bar of iron comfortably against his shoulder. There is one other thing. Do you have a spare apron and set of forge gloves? Could have, Caleb said hesitantly. Why? There's an old bramble patch behind the inn. Cot nodded in the direction of the waste town. I am thinking of tearing it up so I can put it put in a garden next year. But I don't fancy losing half my skin doing it. The smith nodded and gestured for Cot to follow him into the back of the shop. I've got my old set, he said as he dug out a pair of heavy gloves and a stiff leather apron. Both were charred dark in places and stained with grease. They're not pretty, but they'll keep the worst of it off you, I suppose. What are they worth to you? Cot asked, reaching for his purse. The smith shook his head. A rod will be a great plenty. They're no good to me or the boy. The innkeeper handed over a coin, and the smith stuffed them into an old burlap sack. You sure you want to do it now? The smith asked. We haven't had rain in a while. The ground will be softer after the spring thaw. Got shocked. My granddad always told me that falls the time to root up something you don't want coming back to trouble you. Got mimicked the quaver of an old man's voice. Things are too full of life in the spring months. In the summer, they're too strong and won't let go. Autumn, he looked around at the changing leaves on the trees. Autumn's the time. In autumn, everything is tired and ready to die falan. <gülüyor> Kendisinden falan da bahsediyor diyoruz. Niye bu kadar çok drama var Abdullah falan? Bekleyin. Az sonra bir şeyler başlayacak. Ondan sonra bayağı bir saracak diyoruz. Later that afternoon, Cod sent Buzz to catch up on his sleep. Then he moved listlessly around the inn, doing small jobs left over from the night before. There were no customers. When evening finally came, he lit the lamps and began to page disinterestedly through a book. Fall was supposed to be the year's busiest time, but travelers were scarce lately. Cod knew with bleak certainty how long winter would be. He closed the inn early, something he had never done before. He didn't bother sweeping. The floor didn't need it. He didn't wash the tables or the bar. None had been used. He polished a bottle or two, locked the door, and went to bed. There was no one around to notice the difference. No one except Bast, who washed his master and worried and waited. Bölüm bitiyor burada bu durumda diyoruz. Chapter 4, Halfway to Ne Var diye okunuyor herhalde. Okey. Diyecek bir şey var mıdır? Düşünüp geliyorum. Nope. Hadi görüşürüz.